Okay, so this is what is slope part two. We're on question four on page four. So now let's see how to find the slope when we don't know the rise and the run. If we graph the slope on the coordinate system, we'll be able to derive another formula for slope using the x and y values of the coordinates. So let's put a line with a slope of one half on the coordinate system. Begin by plotting one, three, if we go over one, one, two, three, so this is A, and it's 1, 3, 1, 3. From point A, do the rise and run from a slope that is 1 over 2, plot the second point. So we're going to go up 1 and over 2. And this will be the second point, which is B, which is over 3, up 4. Okay, and remember the coordinates are x and y, and slope is change over y, change over x. So they're kind of like opposite. Okay, let's connect the points using a straight edge, which is a ruler. Okay. And then we were to extend it with an arrow on each end, okay? So the ordered pairs, again, are one and three, and three and four. That can be used to find a slope of one half. Now, when we want to do it using the points, we're gonna say let y1 represent the y coordinate of point A, therefore y1, y1 is 3 and y2 is 4. Then we're going to subtract y2 from 4 from y1. So 4 minus 3 equals 1. The difference in the y co coordinates y2 minus 1 is the rise. So the rise is the up and the down. Now let us find the difference in the x-coordinates. So let x1 represent 1, and then x2 will be 3. So x2 minus x1 is 3 minus 1 equals 2. And this is the run that goes from left to right, OK? So just to reiterate, this will be x1, y1, and this will be x2, y2, how we did it down here, okay? So the next sheet is the formula for the slope between two points A and B can be found by using the x and y coordinates of the two points, and we just did it. See how simple it was. Call the ordered pair for point A, x1, y1, and the ordered pair for point B, x2, y2. So slope equals rise over run, which is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, and remember, it's also change over y, change over x. Now, so what I like to do is we're going to do x1, y1, x2, y2, and I just label them ahead of time so it makes the math so much easier. So y1 is 5, so you just look underneath. y2 is 9, x1 is 1, x2 is 2. So I always write the formula because it keeps me where I need to be, nice and clean. And so y2 is 9, y1 is 5, x2 is 2, x1 is 1. So 9 minus 5 is 4, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So the rise over run is 4 over 1. Now the next one, we have y2 is 1, y1 is 4, x1 is 2, x, this should be a 2, x2 is 1. So again, y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 
equals 1 minus 4, x2, 1 minus 2. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And remember, two negatives divided by each other becomes a positive, so this is 3 over 1. Okay, so now let's do the next set. Remember to x1, y1, x2, y2, x1, y1, x2, y2. So y1 is 0, y2 is negative 2, x1 is 4, x2 is 8. So y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So we have y2 is negative 2 minus 0, x2 is 8 minus x1 is 4. So negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2, and 8 minus 4 is 4. And we can simplify it to equal negative 1 half. So if you divide both sides by both the numerator and denominator by 2, it goes down to 1 half. Okay, so this is simplified. All right, again, y2 is 4, y1 is 6, x1 is negative 8, x2 is 3. So we have y2 minus 1 over x2 minus x1 equals x y2 minus y1 is 6, minus 6. Then we have x2 is 3, and then we have minus negative 8. So you're going to end up with two negative signs. So 4 minus 2 is negative 2. And remember, when you have two negative signs together, it becomes a positive. So 3 plus 8 is 11. So it's negative 2 over 11. So rise over run. So you go up 4, you go over 1. You go up 3, you go over 1. You go down 1, you go over 2. You go down 2, you go over 11. Okay? Remember, if this is going too fast, take your time and look at it again. Okay? So now I'm going to do one more set on the next page. So again, y1, x1, y1, x2, y2, x1, y1, x2, y2. So y1 is negative 5, y2 is negative 2, x1 is negative 3, x2 is negative 1. So y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 equals negative 2 minus negative 5. Then we have negative 1 minus negative 3. And remember, this becomes a positive when you have these two together. So when we have negative 3 plus 5, it becomes 3 over negative 1 plus 3 becomes 2. Okay? So we go up 3 over 2. And the last one we're going to do for the slope, and then we'll go to another video for the, the rest. So y1 is 7, y2 is 0, x1 is 0, x2 is 5. So y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 equals, we need 0 minus 7, 5 minus 0. So we have negative 7 over 5. So you go down 7 and over 5. Okay, now if you have to, remember, go back on the video and watch it. Thanks for listening.